Excuse me? 47 degrees tomorrow. Yeah, it'll be summer tomorrow. <laughs> Short sleeves. So I'd just like to introduce Bob Frankston. I think most of you know Bob. Uh, we posted Bob's uh, resume on the uh, on the website and on my uh, meeting announcement that came out. And uh, Bob, you know, is the creator of VisiCalc, which was the first PC spreadsheet. I must have said, I've been around forever. Yes. <laughs> He was around when the internet IP was uh, 8 bits. Well, that was the Arpanet. Yeah, it was the Arpanet. Which is different than the internet, but that's a longer discussion. Yeah. That's, that's great. Anyway. Bob, well, just, we can spend a lot of time in Joe, but we can get right into the hacking. Bob's going to be talking about home control. Or hacking. Or, well, you'll see. We'll figure out about Home hacking. loss of control. <laughs> so the machines are taking over. So here's a, 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 I try to give a sort of front load in case you don't get the thing. Uh, what's different about what I'm doing from a lot of the home control stuff I've seen is many designed to be centralized, just try to treat the house as a computer. Uh, what I call is designed to step for the house. You know, step the family and everything and baby. And I'm trying, this is much more a combination of something for me to learn about things and to be very dynamic. There's no central point. It's more to reflect sort of, you know, the real world. So this is why, so I put the picture of that wiring panel in. Why well, I don't want it to. The idea that you have to run wires through the house for each analog pad and analog <coughs> is some people's idea of sort of home control, home theater. And my attitude is it should all be connected to software. So I'm a software guy. You use copy, you separate out the topology of the wire into the relationship. So, so, so that's the flexibility I'm aiming towards. So it's not the model of the fancy house. Uh, I put up the, the car uh, handle because people are saying, why do you want to do this? You know, light switch works just fine. And how, how many of you demand that your car has a motorized window? That seems absurd. And some of you are old enough to remember when that didn't exist, it was this fancy luxury thing. But it became mundane for a couple of reasons. Number one reason is that the motor made it was cheaper than trying to keep both the mechanics stuff going. So the micro motor was enabled. And then once you had it, you discovered you could put it, you could have it open all windows, but you could go to the toll booth. In the old days, if people remember you had to put money out of the toll booth, remember that? You would hit the open the window, stay open. And you can start to do modes where you know, leave the car closing. So you start to do these things once you have the infrastructure. So it's it's not that you're automating the car, it's that you're enabling better control and flexibility. And that's really the design point here. So let me jump way ahead. I should go back to this next case. Okay, so this is my latest project. Just to give you a sense of how far things are coming, then we'll do some history. So there's a version of this from a company called Alterco in Bulgaria, actually. That little uh, blue box there, blue box is a reserved word. Okay. The little blue thing is basically a full web server that it's easy to wire, turn things on and off. And, uh, and I'm a software guy, so why build things when you have the right kind of components? So all I'm doing is controlling the power through this. And the nice thing is, as far as I've got it's got a Wi-Fi server. Now, a lot of people are concerned about low-power network radios on AC power. They just, they sort of miss the point. Uh, so we got power, you can just keep this on. And very easy, and what I like about it, is with the web server, I can lock it down, but it comes up and it's easier to configure. This is versus a uh, Sonoff, where I was trying to get the API, and they said, sorry, it was a $299 a year fee to get the API information. Now, the problem is not simply the cost of doing that. The idea that I'm on a control of doing the thing, yes, this can do sort of remote or cloud connectivity, but it can work, run locally. That, I don't know, a kid's been taught that computing is something that's done in the cloud somewhere. <laughs> you know, in any case. 
Uh, so it's, that's the local first. That bulb, the two has a website grant. Now, part of this, but that's for us in light. I left the ballast in, but those are LEDs which could use the ballast. Don't care whether it's a ballast. This is what you can do with So that's the control wiring for this. But the other things I like are these. First, uh, up there. How many of you have done it, your own AC wiring? And of course, only WIMP shut the power off. <laughs> so you want uh, these flexible things, which make it, I just discovered these recently, which make it easy to connect wires without having to worry about it popping out and electrocuting you. That's, it, it's amazing the big, the amount of smoke you get when you get a short. Um, one of my early childhood experiences was blowing 15 amp fuse across my fingers. You know, work on extension cord. How do you know it's still plugged in? Uh, the diode lights up. What? The diode lights up in the end. Well, <laughs> if, 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 if you got fancy, but, you know. But luckily, it was working with the same hand. Otherwise, I might not have been giving this talk. And this is an interesting component. This is a, 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 also from Shell. I'm just starting to play with this stuff. Which I, is that's an RGBW controller. So you just buy uh, LCD strips and just control them yourself. So the, the, the point here is these are, are make it easy for software people to do things. I don't have to get out of solder iron. Though actually I did get out of solder iron recently. I had a bulb which was not quite making contact. Put a little blob of solder on it, got that contact. Even after the thing fell off. But that's, for the most part, it's becoming a software component world where you have these macro components. So let, let me um, go back to history. I don't know how many of these things have lined up ahead. Okay. Oh, and that's the screen that some of you logged in. Yeah. Okay. So currently, <laughs> I used to argue that everything was too much in the form of the Jetson repo. Well, I guess Jetsons are now winning with Alexa. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about Alexa here, where it fits in, because it's both driving the market and also, I think, retarding it by making everything, you know, have closed APIs speak to Alexa. So I was thinking of programming around it by, by putting a little module together in a box where you have, where you have uh, text to speech telling the Alexa what to do. And then maybe listening back to ask Alexa with the lights on. Uh, but the key thing is I learned just it's like the days you used to write random number programs, just to learn. So this is basically zeros and ones. And so I'm a lot of learning by just doing the basic stuff, not the fancy. So will, how many of you remember X10? How many of you played with X10? Have, if you look at the protocol underneath to look at how it works. So X10 basically was 1970s technology. Now I was actually back, I remember visiting, actually visiting Dan Brooklyn, Bexley back in the early 70s, thinking of how do you do power line signals and touch tone phone signals. X10 did something much cheaper and simple, which is just to use a power line and put glitches on the power line, which could be detected. And <coughs> The powerful idea was you just turn things on and off, nothing fancier, and that was very generic. It sent an 8-bit code with 4-bit house code, 4-bit uh, unit code, so you could have 16 houses and 16 devices in each house. Uh, and eventually that evolved to be basically just straight through the 6-bit code, but it wasn't that reliable, it was slow signaling, it was one way, but it gave you a chance to start to experiment, just like the micro-motors and things gave you some experience. Now the protocol is quirky. Uh, you, you had like what, the lights, non-lights, if you wanted to, so you could decide, you know. I won't go into all the protocol stuff, but I think. So it, it, but it evolved. So by the 90s, I could buy a PC to X10 interface to control X10. And a company called Smart Home uh, had things so I could actually ask, is this light on? Listen to the signal of other lights so I could try to track the state. But it's very unreliable. So my program and slow. So my software had a lot of complexity to program around that. Um, so, the, the, so, so I talk about the software. 
there was a module, main module on my PC, which was the control program. Uh, it was written in the highest level language I could find at the time, which is Visual Basic. I mean, it, it seems stupid to write anything in C, you know, C++, because you spend all your time programming around things. With VB, yes, I couldn't do some of the object stuff, but I can come pretty close. So that, that became the control program, but I transitioned to using um, VB.net early in the game, which gave me a lot more power. Uh, a key thing was, once I did that, to see the event serialized, and basically a lot of complexity, because you can trigger events, you have rules, things are cascading. Uh, so there was, it, it, one of the issues, it, it was basically managing its complexity, but it was still a central module that everything went through. But the key part of the design was, because it was X10, if you turned the light on, that message went directly from the switch to the light. So my computer can enhance the network, but it was not a point of a key point of dependency of family. And that was one of my central design requirements, which time to time um, didn't do as good a job on that. But overall, that was what I tried to maintain, as opposed to a lot of the systems. I mean, one of the worst is, um, and I'll get to it later, is smart things with Samsung board. Uh, you have, you, you, your house is totally dependent upon their cloud, which is, I think, in Tasmania, I don't know where. Oh, which reminds me, that Sarnoff, I mentioned they market the fee per year. They said, well, we have to charge because it use our cloud. So I sent them a a polite note, saying, well, I don't want my house, why is my house dependent on your cloud? So this is the latest version of that control software. Uh, it used to be a lot more complex. When it was trying to do everything, it had the map of the house, it had these events, it had the buggy events, it had all this stuff. And one of my experiences over the years was simplifying it, saying, okay, the tools are better, the program's better, I, I can reduce the complexity. Uh, so one of the key things was a map of the house I had in this program or in the desktop. And I had a table where everything was in the house. And we'll get to that later. On the right, over there, are the, pro are the program modules. So, initially, there was a, a main house network program, was where things were. And run NH was, I wanted to make it a Windows service. And I never did. But I, I basically automatically logged in on my machine booth. Uh, there's some other libraries I won't go into, and I used to have the mapping uh, modules there. So we're going to watch how that evolved. So about half of that was there at the time. And this is, so it was all in Visual Studio VB.net uh, initially, and then I uh, switched to C Sharp for all the new modules. Uh, so it's a mixture, which is a nice thing. Um, so, as I said, it was written in VP6 and pervasively affected by X10 because I, I signed everything, <coughs> new numbers A1 through P15. And you had to know everything that the same letter could be turned on at once. And then there were tricks, because it was so slow, I had to use every trick in this complexity problem. Uh, when you show display the status, I had to distinguish between the requested status and the actual status. It was until the light total was on, I didn't know. So there's a lot of indeterminacy. I also had to make sure my kids never visited friends' houses where the lights would actually do what the switch said. They had to be used to the idea that the light switch were probabilistic devices. I call it my beta family. Uh, I did discover that scripting had only limited utility. In the main script, which I still use, the one that shuts the light and at night, because the kids never did. And I also use the torch lights. Because for the most part, uh, scripting was not, you know, it turns out to have not been that useful. The initial scripting, by the way, I did was dynamically load modules <coughs> in VB. Um, so, okay. And like I said, the other part was, was practicing on the program for features. 
and trying to figure out how you do ro a rule engine and bring dynamically. Uh, got a lot of these data. How many people know about Link? Which is, a, I think, one of the main things I like about C-sharp. It's basically, Link is unevaluated expressions, or lambdas, in C-sharp, which can then be compiled dynamically into, into SQL standards and database. So it makes it much easier to work with databases than in you know, straight to SQL. Um, I also make some programming things. I try to have a, you structure the state as opposed to a class, so it's get less flexible. But I do distinguish between the actions you want. In other words, this is what they turn on versus you're on now. And that's a useful distinction, <coughs> but I think I, I didn't quite do that right. So it's still, you know, you learn by doing, and then you have a mess to clean up. The thing I like <coughs> about, I'll say, strongly typed languages is because they allow refactoring and later catch-up. I now modified that to say I don't like strongly typed languages, but I like languages with type hinting, so I can tell the system what I want to do, and when I do, <coughs> have, have it, you know, tell me you're trying to use this type of thing when it wants that type, so it catches errors. Uh, but by having dynamic types, you get the flexibility. So the next thing was to improve on X10. So everybody said, okay, X10 is great. We've got to do better. So there are a lot of experiments. Just like people, and how many of you know about CDI? All the CD people were trying to do, you know, smart engines that would run on CD, so the games would run the game machine. There was Firewire, which would attempt to be a smarter than the average protocol protocol. They all failed because they were TDS, too damn smart. CE bus, for example, you couldn't just turn something on. You had to know what you were turning on. And things will automatically find each other. And what was missing was a control panel where you can explicitly set things up. In other words, it, 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 the problem was you couldn't assume, or it was a mistake, to assume that people who wanted all this gear were not going to invite you to use. It's sort of a trophy on market. You want to wake up early, you call your installer to adjust your clock. And there was that market. But the real market has been driving with the, with the people who can do things themselves. So I can use a PC to set the state. And this is going to come up when I speak about Insteon. So I'm not trying to give a linear talk. With Insteon, if I have two switches, the way you're supposed to set it up, you're supposed to put this <coughs> switch in set mode, run across that switch and hit the switch. That's stupid. I'll just go to my screen, just tie the two together. Just uh, but, I to pro uh, but that's the kind of thing I had to program around, but uh, I'll get to that a little later. So CBUS, I actually tried Microsoft to support CBUS, not because I liked it, but because we could get control of the industry, denature, get rid of the stupid mapper language, and build on the power line signaling that had. That was another big thing I forgot to mention, the whole idea of using the power line for signaling, which has evolved. So let me get to Insta and talk about power line signaling some more. So I've already mentioned these, there's a tendency, and this is a continuing tendency, I'm going to, and I'm going to put the thing right in my next column, which is due in a week, on putting the smarts of the protocol. Now, we had Firewire, which was doomed from the beginning. So it was, I, I bet against it, and that was correct. Uh, there's Bluetooth, where you need a new version of Bluetooth for each new protocol. <coughs> now there's Bluetooth Mesh. And the Zigbee, how many by Zigbee and Z-Wave, those are radio protocols. Now both owned by Silicon Labs. Uh, and the thing is, if you want to have a Zigbee device, <coughs> you can have a Zigbee network for each, each, a different Zigbee repeater for each Zigbee network. Then another repeater for Z-Wave. And then you get Bluetooth Mesh. Who knows, whatever that is. But each one is a closed system. Now, I was hopeful for Thread. Thread was an, is an IP-based protocol that uses Zigbee radios. And then Silicon Labs goes and puts a security program around it. Which means that another closed network. Yes, they use IP, so it, it, it's much better than Zigbee, but it's one step short of full flat connectivity. But so these all exist now. I, I, I it can gateway to them and use the devices, but you know it's important to understand the, the, their limits. 
Um, and they all presume scarcity, not enough dresses, slow networks, all the, and these had complexity, you have to get from this, it's a low pain, you have all this complexity. I'm not even getting Laura Wan and other dead ends. Okay, and there are other protocols. There's Lutron, the by the uh, 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 well, Lutron has a fault. Lutron is big, you get way in. UPB fell by the wayside. There's UPB versus Insteon. And there's still a few people who use UPB. And I, you have to be inside, I can go. I, I, I have to confess how much time I spent learning the arcane aspects of these protocols. So I can implement them in the PC through the interface at a very low level because they typically came out with lousy PC software. They violated one of the important rules. Never let hardware people design protocols. Uh, they keep screwing up in these basic ways, limit length. So we'll get to Insteon. So Insteon was done by Smart Home, who did a lot of work to prove X10. The problem is they wanted to get the OEM business to do this module. So they designed a protocol which is much better than X10. It was power line based, signaling, but much higher performance. It was also had radio, so you can go radios wide or wireless and go between the two. Uh, it had a message format, large message formats, more or less you want to command, so command all these. So they got all that right. I mean, it was sort of a generic on and off. But it's got problems. Number one, it was limited. It took me a while. I wrote a lot of very fancy asynchronous code. It took me a while to figure out how dumb the protocol was. And basically, you send a packet out, you wait for the echo. All the asynchronous <coughs> code I did just made it more complicated. It was just an echo protocol. And it could go three hops. You're out of capacity, you can't extend it. You're stuck. So, and also, the first implementation, they <coughs> lift out the set record command, which they documented. They lousy documentation. So you could do a separate, to link things to, you had a linking record, instead of receiver records. But you could just set the records in operation. But they had a peek and a poke. So you could peek and a poke those records into the devices. So I wasted a lot of my life programming all this crap. Um, and also doing the uh, uh, link of the software. Now eventually I came out with a thing, a program to do some of this called HouseLink. So, you know, I was starting to get working and stuff. So I ran into a couple of problems. HouseLink, they stopped supporting. It still works, but they stopped supporting. Uh, I learned how to, uh, that you can get a serial program protocol using TCP to one of their controls instead of having to use a serial port in the computer. They stopped selling those. Fortunately, get them on eBay. So I got a pile of them. So one, I have one that works. So it's a, but ultimately, what happened is I had too many devices in my house and it became unreliable. You couldn't reach A from B. And then when I added one smart device to clean up the links. The whole thing fell apart. So I sort of got to work again, but it was time to look further. Um, so, okay, more about in, uh, You see all that, those things I had for Instagram, a lot of support code. Okay. Uh, so I discovered smart things. So a company called Smart Things that was started up in New York that basically decided that their Information Society was a fancy rule engine. Now I knew 20 years before the rule engines were a dead end. But they designed a whole system around a cloud-based rule engine. So if you turn your light switch on, you better not do it during rush hour or the busy time today, but there might be a little delay it could, on the rule engine. So I wrote a program in the language that, which they supported called Groovy. Groovy is a mashup of Java and, I don't know what scripting thing they imagine. You know, but it's an Instagram language without that much support, but I had to learn, but I was able to write a program by taking somebody's other code and repurpose it to give me commands so I can send HTTP commands to it, and when the state changed on a command, it would send back, uh, send me a, a, a command so again, I wrote a lot of code programs around, figured out their model, which is not obvious, that, there was, again, you put up the documentation of the model, it took me a while to figure out that they things called capabilities, 
and thinking of local capabilities. I won't go into all the lear learning experiences, but it got it to work. And the other thing is you need to use OWASP, which should, in theory, is simple. In practice, I couldn't figure it out. But luckily, somebody created a site called IOTB.org uh, and made it easy for me to generate my OWASP tools. So I got that working, and I wrote a separate module just to do smart things. And then I linked it with my main program using HTTP. So now I can use Zigbee devices, I can use Zigbee, Zigbee devices, I can even gateway fill a few devices, all sorts of stuff. So I start exploring. I start to open a few devices up cautiously. And it actually worked. I was able to do some things, to get to work and these new devices. But it turns out I don't know how to put it. Let's say, when you see a lot of hexadecimal numbers in inline code, they violate the number one rule of programming. You never put number zero, or a number other than zero, and maybe one in your code. So you're supposed to know, you know, look at the hex diagrams. It's sort of the hardware spirit of, I know this switch, the, way, the standards and stuff. It's not done by, by software people. That was in the Z-Wave world. So I could, I discovered I could use some modules, not others. But I got it working well enough. So I had a fair number of devices. At some point, I got a lot of G wind bulbs, which are cheap at home people. By the way, anybody needs some Zig uh, Zigbee bulbs? I've got lots of them. <laughs> uh, and they would you sure to work for a while, for a long, forever. You know. So there's a limit to how much I can do with it. I can, and in some cases, I kept my Insteon switches in line with these, so I can overwrite them. But that was the state of things. There were other things called Wink, which, tried, which actually had, might have been better in the house and things. But it was all, uh, the rules of Zigbee pairing, it had to be on this network, it, it, it's just terrible. But you have to use what's there. Separately, by the way, there's linking to like the apps, the virtual devices, there's IFTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTTT
I say TypeScript, not JavaScript, because I get back to my comments about you know, typing, type checking. I don't, I don't want type checking enforced at one time, but I do want a, a programming assistant uh, that can help me with that to figure out things. Um, so that, but I'm getting, getting really ahead of myself. So as, as I said, I, I coexist with native apps. So the other thing that happened was files, well, 150 megabits. Bias. Now, the reason why 150 megabit is very important has nothing to do with the upspeed and downspeed. It's going to force me to shake out my whole network and discover, oh, here's the bottom left. This equipment uh, you know, has this problem and everything. So I did a massive improvement. One thing is go to ubiquity. I'll get to more of that later. Which I think, it, it, I haven't played with Ruckus but I think ubiquity is basically the sweet spot of the prosumer market. I get a control panel for my devices. I can say this needs a static address, control that. And last count, I had 205 IP addresses in use on ubiquity. Uh, and I put APs around the house, all on the same SSID, which is automatic Drain Tech 2. Of course, years ago, I had Drain Tech uh, access points. And you can never change, it's like you never go home, you can never change your access point name again. When you have 200 devices, you can't, it can never change it. It's stuck, it's so RMF Drake 2 2 for the rest of my life, my kid's life, and it's going to be in my will. Uh, but what it meant was I now have coverage of the same SSID throughout the house, which is, it becomes important when we get to my lighting. Now, it, the other problem, though, with Fios is it uses Mocha. Mocha is multimedia something over coaxial cable, whose primary design point was poaching Comcast wires. Uh, but it, it, it's otherwise a lousy protocol. Uh, but Verizon's quantum router is actually very sophisticated. It's a switch between go from Mocha to broadband and all this much more. It's actually much more sophisticated than your average home network. But uh, I wanted my own DHCP server, especially once I went to, I thought it was originally dealing, but once I shook things out, I really needed to run my own DHCP server. So Verizon is no help in that. But luckily I had the, the, the president of the company did the software <laughs> for, for the box to help me out. Uh, so I actually got, got it working, but what it meant is I broke all the Verizon Center boxes. Do a cold boot, I have to go reset back to the quantum box and go back. Uh, and now, recently, about uh, two weeks ago, I set that box in the kitchen stuff working. Because it was connected to the Ethernet, not coax. Uh, and turns out I got the new generation. Basically, it broke the support. So right now, Fios is hopelessly broken. The only reason I have the Fios TV is my wife likes to play video roulette. And the deal is I'm not going to force her. She's a beta site, but there are limits. So we have a whole discussion. I've got, I've got Roku, I've got Fire, I've got Chromebox, I've got Android TV. I've got all of those to experiment all the different services. So we have a whole discussion on where all the top is going. But right now, it's pretty close to, to you can use it for everything. It's just the license is screwed up because like there's DirecTV now versus DirecTV licenses versus Verizon licenses versus Go versus Now. It, it's a perverse mess. My, my hope, I'll even say my bet, is it's all going to be browser-based. Because the browser basically is the programming environment. What the browser is missing right now is a directional tab or a jump thing. So you, can do, so you can do a simple remote that goes to this control and that six feet away. I think it's fairly simple to do, the six foot controller, but it's not there yet. I'm, I'm going to wonder if we're here and here. Are you, are you basically putting in uh, files internally in your whole network as no. opposed to having a, a router? No, I've got uh, my internal network, and I can draw a diagram <coughs> of it. Okay. Fires comes in. Oops. Oh, it's not an ink mode. Let me go back. Okay. 
I go to pan, uh, uh, okay, go to pan. I should get a blank slide for this, but I'll just draw on top of this. Okay, you got the fires coming in here. To the, now the fires is coming in to your ONT here, mm -hmm. up in that device. It, below 100 megabits, they would prefer to do coax. But I've got basically a separate coax that's going to their quantum, quantum box. And the coax separately goes to the main set-top the, the, the set box server for Dallas. Okay. Now, this quantum box here does, is not necessary. I can have them two separate. The only reason I need this now is if I want to put a set-top box on Ethernet. So this bridges Mocha to Ethernet. And all I really need is a Mocha bridge. The problem is, uh, and at this point, since I broke the Ethernet, I could probably drop that box completely. But it's needed to, to basically configure the set-top boxes. The equivalent set-top box, it goes to the broken DHCP protocol, this implemented. The other reason you need it is uh, that video on demand is over IP. So the video on demand signal goes over the IP part and then into the uh, the MOCA from IP, and it's above the bandwidth they give you. Now, I'm at a gigabit now, so if I'm not even reserving, you know, it doesn't really matter. But, uh, so, it, 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 it's a hodgepodge done by basically complacent old line engineers who don't really get the internet. They're just telephone guys, and who cares? As long as the protocol works for them, they don't test it outside there. You know. Remember, they never got protocols like ATM to work. That's a dirty secret of the phone system. ATM never worked. And that was their secret transfer protocol. It worked within a carrier, but never worked between carriers. They had to use analog bridges and shims and all this crap. <coughs> so, continuing on. So, then I discovered Lightbox. Now, I discovered, I, I might have been on Kickstarter first, I don't know, years ago. They did IP-based bulbs. Now this is what really forced the issue with going for ubiquity and common uh, SSIDs. First, <coughs> because they depend on the SSID. to speak to each other, form a common network. So I finally had to just, and once I tried to keep, used to give each access point a separate address so you know where you are and everything, at some point I gave up on that. And said, I just did the same SSID right in the house. Now the reason I chose them is they've got a whole set of bulbs. They're the only one to, well, not the only, but the only IP-based one to do 1100 lumen <coughs> ER30s. Uh, and so, and then for nice, uh, basically I've got about a 20% DLA, not DLA rate, anyway, death rate. And they've been very nice about replacing the bulbs. I got a whole big box of dead like these bulbs. But they've been good about replacing them. So I just keep extras and stuff. And, I, and this is where I discovered like color temperature. It used to be with special wheat bulbs, with the G and all those other bulbs. My wife would complain about LEDs. But I tried to use LEDs early. It was too harsh. Now I said, do you like 3500? 3500 is good for the kitchen. For, <coughs> if you want a dressing room, you might want a harsh thing to get outdoor colors. So you, so you start, you know, daylight. So this is sort of, the nice things about Lifex. They've got, and I add the Lifex Michael there, they've got, unfortunately, the protocol is cloud based. Okay? The HTTP protocol. Now they do have a LAN protocol, which I have programmed. <coughs> so this is where programming Node becomes important. Because with Node, um, I'm able to, you know, write and basically pick up, I pick up, like Lifex, I pick up somebody, somebody figured out how to program the Lifex protocol. And it was, it was, I know the right term. It, it's a kids these days implementation. Which means it was very regular, well commented, very pretty. But not quite understanding parameterization, so big chunks of code would get repeated, for example. Uh, it was done in JavaScript and TypeScript, so there's a lot of documentation interface, a lot of code to do type checking at runtime to make sure you have the right parameter. So there's all this complexity and 
and there's a group feature for the cloud implementation, which is totally pointless for the local, but it emulated that. So I remangled the code into TypeScript using asynchronous, so can, I could understand it. But it's that kind of ability. So at some point, I need to start using those interfaces to be able to, you know, control locally. But the cloud one has been reliable enough that it worked with it. And the fallback is to use their app, which runs locally. Uh, so I think, you know, I always worry about making sure the house works if all this crap out. The big thing is the need to join IP addresses. They've been, they're not the most, they've been getting better picking up the DHCP. I've got a 15 minute DHCP list. I could probably stand that now, but that's what it's been. Uh, so, but it's, you know, and I've got about 100 bolts and things. And it actually scales. I mean, ubiquity, I mean, I, I checked 205 devices now. So I'm thinking of actually going to a slash 23 address. I'm just worried that something's going to break the slash 23. I own 192.55.226. But if I do 227, I don't own it, but I found that Jackson College in Mississippi, a professor has it, so I, I don't expect it to be conflict. <laughs> in, th in theory, my addresses are, are basically globally valid, even if I'm not rooted. Uh, but I did discover that Roku, Roku, Roku Remote Control app does not work for me because it, it says you're not, a, it has to do with UPS, I won't go into that. In any case. So life fix was very liberating because in the kitchen was I, I couldn't scale uh, instant enough. So my light I, I have you know about sixteen lights in my kitchen. I could group them, but now each bulk I can control individually. I still group them through software, but the option you want the light just on the sink I can do it. And what I should show you again uh, uh, yeah, time I'll show you the control panel, uh, which is actually we're getting to yeah. We're getting to, to discussing my app. Uh, I'll show you pictures of it, but this, um, actually, let me uh, go to the desktop. Let's see. I'm risking getting out of this. That's Boston. Thank you for my flight back from. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this will be too fuzzy for you to see the address. Slash. Um, oh, how is that? No, please don't hack my house. Oh, you can't see it. It's not on screen. <coughs> Bob, question. Did you say you put all the devices on the public address, public IP address? Uh, it has a public IP address, but it's not publicly accessible. Is it? That's the distinction. In other words, I don't root to, root to my house. Okay. The site cannot be reached. Oh, oh, stupid. Yeah. Um, I need it. Where's the mouse when I need it? You can use mine if you want. I'm a wireless. Okay, <coughs> my house. Well, we, we can do that later. We'll just go back to this. Um, right now? Oh. Later, I can, I, I can show it here what the control panels are like. Like, it's something like my kitchen, I've got groups, and I, I, I've been expanded with layout. Oh. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to stop this. Play settings. Okay, we'll stop that. You want to keep um, I'll discard the ink. I'll close this. Um, that's the stupid question. We go back to the PowerPoint. We're going to do 
Shift F5, and we're back. For years of practice, practicing programming around. Okay, we'll get to, to showing what the screens look like, but basically I've got, I, I'm going to show you a little bit later, a web app, which is a control panel that runs on here. Um, and that, I mount these on my wall, I'm going to show you this later. So this is the real switch. Now when I started programming it, um, I started the floor plan. <coughs> So I took that database, which I mentioned earlier I did for where things were, and simply brought it out to the web program, the floor images, which I basically built on blueprints I had made out of the house 30 years ago. Uh, so I can actually turn lights on and see the status in this mode. Uh, what I discovered is that uh, it, it was a pain. Much easier to label buttons and show the status. So I rarely ever go to the floor plan mode. But the nice thing about mounting these on the wall, using this great modern technology, well, where did I put, oops, oh good, I put the cap on here. Um, three of command strips. These are Velcro ones. So I put these on the wall, they're removable, I can put things up. Turns out LifeFix is using it for the panels now. So again, if you look at LifeFix, they've now got bars and panels. And those are Velcro on the magnetic connection. And I make a little use of it, I haven't gone wild, on the back, I've gone wild, on, I'm just out of place and put them up. Uh, so that, um, <coughs> It, it basically is part of the soft rad. This is soft stuff. But the important thing is, you go into a room, just hit the switch there. You don't have to pull out the app out of your pocket, figure out how to get into this mode, how to get into that. It's like, on. Oh. Now, I don't bother with motion detect. I don't feel like programming these things. Motion detect is too blue. Who cares? You go into a room, you, you're passing the thing, you turn the light on. What's important is, for example, so the room. I'm in the hall. I don't have to walk back through. I can just say shut the lights off in that area without having to worry about going to each room. It's not a big thing, but it's, that's what I showed in the crank. It's just a little convenience that comes at no cost. I'm able to do. So you don't have to run down the stairs. I can turn the foyer light off. You can turn the night lights off and things like that. But uh, I wanted resilience. The problem with, with the initial implementation of the web app was everything, the web server was, I, I added a web server to my controller. And it was a web server designed to take command. In other words, this is not a web page. Forget web pages, that's so 1990s. These are web apps, where it's written in TypeScript, happens to use the browser as the engine. And then it has a protocol command a API using web sockets to speak to my controller. And these web sockets are symmetric. So when the light changes, you can send a message saying, show the status there. So the main controller winds up being sort of the switching engine for this information. See the database change reflects it out. So that's, that was a design point. The problem is that engine goes down and nothing works for the web. So what I realized is I can directly program, mostly you like take life as protocol, you can send HTTP commands. I discovered that the newer Insteon boxes took HTTP commands. Not very well documented, not very powerful, but it's an HTTP command for these boxes. So I wanted to program direct action in the web app. What is the problem? Course. How do you know about course? C O R S. Okay. For security, you cannot re reference a page that's not on your source site from your browser. Uh, and that's real, so you, unless that other site says it's okay. I'm not gonna get the legacy sites to fix this. Especially Insteon, it's got a good, can you probably the way it'll take back. At some point I can show you the early, the way they're switching program internally. Do, again, do not let hardware people design software. I can't repeat that strongly. So um, I implemented a separate programming node 
that basically is a coarse shape. It listens for command, uh, for HTTP commands, it can relay them from the browser. Now, in order to get resilience, I want to basically run down a multiple platform. So if, if one of the core things are down, one of the, it, it can get this. So it runs running on the main machine along with the big engine. Another's running on a separate Windows machine, which I've set up as also a backup server, uh, a file server. And that's a pie <coughs> with a little screen, a $30 screen that sits right on top of the pie and runs a shim. The nice thing about Node is I can run on anything. I don't really care what the machine is. It runs perfectly fine on these platforms and everything. Uh, so um, that's why I get resilient. And the future direction is to, is to really move to Node, which has other advantages because the flexible objects means I can pass data through and things like that. So, and so I can rewrite my engine. Uh, now, people complain about the single threading asynchronous paradigm, but that really means I don't worry about locking and interfering until I get cooperative ta multitasking with the async. How many are familiar with the async uh, keyword and tasks? Okay. Uh, there's been an evolution. We used to have processes and threads. And those are very powerful, multi cores and everything, but for the most part, uh, I said uh, there was a callback. You call this when it's done, call this. But trying to manage all the callbacks is complicated. So JavaScript developed the promises, which is a way to basically simplify and say, program this, that, then this, that, then this. The latest evolution, this is also version of in C sharp, is await and async. You declare this async, you can wait for this code. So you write a piece of code down here, and you say, do this, do that, and, and await, if you want to wait for it. If you don't want to wait for it, just send it off. <coughs> now, reading the code makes it much more readable. You just have to twist your head around the fact the code has been heavily mangled. So instead of, so instead of it just flowing down, it returns and sets up a callback. So it looks nothing like original code, but if, once you understand that, you can read it like it was going down. Just be aware of what's really going on. And it's very powerful. It ma makes the code much more readable, and that's the way to keep the web apps under control. And, it, you know, it's, and you can think very simply. So if you need a spin off thread, so work with threads or something. But it basically is the, is the model now. Too bad 20 years ago when I started programming this stuff, we didn't have it. You know. um, but so this dynamic object of all has given me a, a sort of a way to, to write mindful. So I want, so I move my scripting over to use Node, so it's, and, mess, and I tie things together through the TCP streams or HTTP, you know, web sockets. Uh, I, my server mo module, which, uh, we'll get back here. Uh, now, call, uh, you know, it had basically initially a TCP interface, then I added uh, the web sockets for HTML, then I added another one, and they all go to the common routine. So, you know, it, it, there's a lot of resilience there. Often makes it hard to figure what's happening, but if one, if it, I, I basically write in a style so that it'll pick up until 20 years later. Within a finite time, I can figure out what's happening. I might be surprised. I might be able to the beginning I did it. Or I might say that was stupid, but I'm often surprised. Oh, that's clever. Uh, so this is sort of flexibility. Now, I, I do plan, as I said, a manana time to shift everything over. Uh, and, you know, a lot of, one of the things about all these other services is that, you know, they're still more of the command control stuff. Idea of all the stuff running coexisting is not quite there. But I do need to figure out how to sort of leverage all the work that's been done. So, recently, about a year, uh, almost a year ago, somebody told me to help me out. I played with them, put it to the side, complained to them that they're, they're basically this smart things emulation, which is an interesting business strategy. Except they're running a house, completely in your house. So you weren't dependent upon this remote smart things engine. 
But it was worth the trouble of my shifting over so I could play. So I go up to Convex. So let's see how old I am. CES. And I ran into, I guess, a CTO of Puppet Town. Oh, didn't you know? I implemented the HTTP thing you asked for. <laughs> So there's a simple HTTP interface, which now I, I argue against, depending on perimeter security, it's terrible and everything, but it's much simpler when you have all the token stuff. I mean, one of the problems I have in, in making turn my web app a full uh, progressive web app is um, Google insists I do everything in HTTPS. The problem is certificates within my house are difficult because let's say everything is DNS based. Now, what I think the future is something more like perimeter security but virtual perimeter security, which is in communities, not talking about physical topology. Right now, the perimeter security is talking about physical topology, which is a problem with the thread, all these other protocols. If the security is, is more like PKI among the community, that works and much simpler than everything having to sort of have a bilateral tokens. So the HTTP interface to Maker, what they call the Maker API, means Hubitat is easy for me to program to. I gave up trying to get smart things to work. I pretty much removed all the devices for smart things. Moving Zigbee devices over is not trivial. Uh, but it pretty much done for the few devices that are willing to embrace Hubitat some more for that simplified interface. Uh, now, the Hubitat Maker API is nice because for modern devices, somebody else has done the hard work by bridging the, the Philips Hue devices. So I started actually, Philips Hue makes outdoor PR therapies. I mean, that's the problem, is nobody making a quick line, so I have to go to Philips outdoor PR therapies. Um, Yeelight, which is Xiaomi, or Little Rice, if you're into Ch uh, Chinese, has a set of interesting products, light bulbs and lamps and things, and you get it. Some of the products you can get on uh, Amazon, and smaller than Amazon, by the way, is a good thing to use. You don't have a little money on the side. But I, I've been using AliExpress to fill in some of the stuff I can't get domestically, like a lamp. There's ceiling lights or other things. But the protocol is semi-documented or something. The nice thing is somebody went through the work of figuring out how to get to support at least some of the uh, it's, it, those are called Ye Light. There's a separate company, Ye Light, with Xiaomi selling. This is Xiaomi product. So it's nice that they support those so I can actually turn on the lamp. Nanoleaf is a whole thing, and, it's, uh, and afterwards I'll go to the web and show you. Nanoleaf start, uh, was uh, a Kickstarter thing that did these very hot, bright LED bulbs, but did that very cool. Cool in the temperature set. <laughs> uh, but they discovered that was not the future, so they, think, so they started making these nice LED panels, which mount on the work, also mount on the command strips, things they've done. And I'll show you. The, and they're very decorative. It turns out my wife actually liked something I did for a change. Uh, in the, I'm sure they work with night lights and stuff. I mean, the whole set of these products coming out, so they bridge to that. So you start to do more interesting things with lights and decorations and stuff using this. And because of a few lights, I can now control the driver lights, but I was having trouble, you know, I scaled beyond Insteon. The, I don't know why Zigbee didn't go there, but basically, well, you is Zigbee, but, you know. So I'm starting to get this stuff to work smoothly, thanks to Hubbard uh, And the nice thing, it's nice that they're, they're not hung up on now, um, yeah, so somebody likes it. Now, you, you notice there that somebody did this web-based control thing, which works with really a smart thing that for above that. But the thing is, I, it's better for me to program my own switches. But this is old school. They would send the commands out, build it locally, instead of being a web app. And that's the whole get box. Um, so, like I said, the more IP devices discovered Sonoff. Sonoff makes a whole set of devices which are IP based or Zigbee if you want, they are controllers, but they try to lock down their API. Now, if you were at the IoT Festival uh, last month, 
Uh, you can reflash a solder box. We can have the solder and put things up. And you can cut light on one screw, so you can put the whole processor in there and screw it back on. So some stuff is salvageable, but the Shelly stuff, so it's a little more round, is designed to be flashed. They, th that diagram I showed you at the beginning shows it here to connect the heavy the serial. You can re I have no need to reflash, it does what I want. But this stuff is starting to become available. Uh, and there are other companies, Lojas, and a few other companies making the bulb. Right now I've got more stuff, but, uh, but I'm very sure it's simply because simplistic. they're not trying to hide the interface, not going Alexa first. They, they can hook up to Alexa, but it's not Alexa first. Uh, the problem is supporting it. That's why I, I try to use as much as I can left to a attack instead of doing everything myself. I still do my whole complex instant support. Life fix is still support locally. I mean, some still support using the client API to do a local API. Surely I support myself, but it's very simple to send HTTP commands. And the other account, again, I'm able to use those. Uh, now, IP, my home network. It's, it, it, when you've got to turn some of the devices, you've got a challenge, especially one of the real problems with today's IP is you don't have local naming. I do use MDNS and something. They found something, but for some reason, HP printing can take five hours to be detected by MDNS. So MDNS works, but it does lose. Now, by the way, I should say, all my switches in my house are T, almost all are TP link switches, which use an easy smart, so I can actually look at the switch, detect it. But they haven't bothered fully programming. They're a bit low end, they're a little flaky, but I don't know where they're blocking some of the signals they might add to that. I tend to go the opposite way with that. What I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, look up, I'll find out what the MAC address is for the device. I'll just have the DCP server assign a static. No, that. well, I, that, no, I could do that. I'm trying to avoid static IP address as much as I can. So I, I did program MAC, look up the MAC to get the IP dynamically. It turns out that software at the time was not reliable and everything, but we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, by the way, one nice thing you figured it is VLAN, so my guest is, network is a VLAN, which means I can have the access points also get available on the access points. VLAN is not a security, where anybody can look the wires, but I can choose to expose them dif differently. And I'm thinking commercial stuff I'm doing, where you can say this, this port on this device has this VLAN. So the user only sees, cannot get to the more VLAN. Now, if somebody's actually the physical wiring box, all bets are off, but if you don't have a crypt, you get to preserve. I don't want to crypt it. Yeah. So, uh, I'll get more to ubiquity, but it's got problems to pull over. I, I had it running uh, um, the automatic pull over Comcast when Verizon went away, uh, and some weird stuff happening, like a PHC, I want to go to. So, I exercised it, and exorcism is a very important thing. So I don't have it set to automatically fall over, but files have been reliable enough, a few outages, nothing. What you do discover is which programs are fairly dependent on the files. Dying DNS isn't supported well, but now they've stopped using PPPP and went to DHCP. Uh, the IP address doesn't change that much. In a few times I can manually fix it. And there's no API. But I said uh, at that point I was exploiting the puppeteer. How do you know about Puppeteer and Selenium? Okay. Selenium is a, t is a t I've been using a lot to script web test engine. Puppeteer is Google's headless product. So I've been using that. So since I wrote that, I figured out how to use Puppeteer to get the data from a library. Very simple uh, load program. And because of the libraries and stuff, that's, this is the whole node ecology at NPM, which is very powerful. And there is a war going on between Python and JavaScript. JavaScript's going to win. Uh, I'm going to, next to the plan here, the ECMA TC53 meeting, which is JavaScript for devices. The reason I say JavaScript's going to win is the NPM is, is a powerful ecology. The language has been involved with async paradigm and stuff. Uh, the hinting you get from, from TypeScript is very powerful. Uh, Python has a community, but it's not quite the same power in terms of the language. What API, uh, what IDE do you use for JavaScript? Visual Studio Code. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, I, why is the visual studio and then so the old cool kids use the visual studio codes are quite powerful. It works very well, includes debugging. I, use Chrome, I can debug in Chrome. It's integrated with Chrome. They've totally given up on Edge. Microsoft's given up on their own Edge. They're going to use Chrome, the, the Chrome Engine. And it runs on other platforms. I, I need to figure out how to... I'm currently running my server, for example, on DigitalOcean. We haven't quite got a Visual Studio there, but I've got to figure out how to get X Windows to work and install. But you know, there are only so many projects. But the nice thing, yeah. So now there are some people who argue for other things, but I think Visual Studio is still the winner. And it's interesting, Visual Studio was written by the guy who did uh, Eclipse. So he learned a lot. Eclipse is a pain. So Visual Studio Code works well. How many of you use it? Okay. Okay, I recommend it. So, um, so this, as I said, is the plug for Shelly. Since I showed this stuff at the beginning, nice thing there is they've got a whole set of things. They've got this. Got this, got this. this is what's up on my wall. You notice that's um, this switch I showed you. Is the kitchen's a fancy panel which has light groups and things. So you can say, so the visual lights are go to group lights. I can choose whether I have group. The way you do groups, okay, my engine had rules. Rules said, if this happens, then do this. Sort of like my own ITT, except it's one table of like control. And what I realized is that one kind of rule, if this, then that, is basically a group. If everything in here has an effect on this, that's a group. So, uh, I actually, so one of the key things I do here is I give it the group list. So if you want to turn on five lights at once, it knows, it, it knows locally what that is, so it goes directly there without having to go through the main server. See, so it works pretty fast. So the kitchen lights can all come on at once, even if they're separate commands, for example. And I can do optimization and grouping and stuff. I won't go into it. But the trick was to get it to work across disparate devices. So if that's a Z-Wave, this is Zigbee, this is Incyon, it's all smoothed out. You, can't, you won't know from it, though. And it's a little color marking in some case so you know it. But for the most part, I can create a group out of any combination, and it works smoothly. Um, and this is the nest at which I, I... There's an API. Basically, they seem to have gone off the radar. Based on 2018, they stopped updating the nest block. So at some point I'd like to do cameras and stuff that are not that space, somebody might do that for me. But the thing is, the physical form factor of the cameras, I can't do that. So they've got robust physical devices, really the physical part that's important to me. And that's your ECM. Now this here is a flick, it's a Bluetooth. Oh, I should have brought it with me, I forgot to bring my Esprino. So flick has a built-in Bluetooth thing, which is Go, which runs on an app on here. And for a while it works and then it stops working. So I gave up on this. But the Esprito is a little Bluetooth thing programmed with JavaScript. A little button with a battery in it that I plan to make more use of. Uh, very easy to program. Uh, did I have to bring it? I probably forgot. I mean, I will take advantage. At some point I want to support the beacons. And, oh, this is because a low-half bulb, but I started <coughs> using the, the U-bulbs. Well, all these, you see, I'm fascinated by all these little shims and stuff. And I get a whole other talk on TV, over the top. But the important part is, and this is sort of, sort of looking, is normalizing it all to common IP connectivity. Despite all the problems with the internet, I can solve the protocol problems all these separately. With enough shims, I can pull things together. So, uh, and those curious about ubiquity, this is the ubiquity screen from the devices. And, I, and like I said, uh, explain you put here, I can now you put here a pull out table of all the devices. So if I want to go, it'll show me the MAC addresses and the IP addresses, and I can update that. It takes just a few seconds to pull off the table. So I can, I can use, I have a map of my network that I can use to do that map, and I plan to make more use of that rather than static addresses. So that, that yeah, helps a lot. So uh, lots of lessons, why we need to networking, you know, all the rules. The interesting philosophical question, 
was the scene. Is the light bulb the part of the scene? Traditionally, they would have group IDs in the bulbs. My scenes are external, so you don't know which part of the scene. Uh, looking for the future, I do want to get rid of the, the physical topology. So that if we have a sh if I share devices between, let's say, my, I, class and town keeping in driveway, like the share. I want that to be a logical sharing, what group it's in, not tied to the physical topology. Uh, and when you say I want to read, Alexa should know, okay, turn this light on, adjust the shade here and everything. Uh, so there's all sorts of interesting future possibilities to do that I think Alexa is not good for ambig amb ambiguous stuff. But it's part of it. But I want to be able to have commit. So I want to be able to, uh, yeah. And by the way, one thing I discovered with Alexa is to wake people up. Say for OK Google, I say, OK Google, set the alarm. And it, I, it tells me, it's setting the alarm, waking. You know, my, my wife doesn't necessarily appreciate that. <laughs> and there are all sorts of other things to, to work with the HVAC, there's a TV, but, you know, all this other kind of stuff. And me more APIs on, on things. And that's a trend, I think. As we prove the value, this goes back to that crank. You know, HVAC APIs, I want to re rethink HVAC. Because once you have smart devices, each damper can be smart and everything. And the HVAC people basically are stuck in about 1910. <laughs> Maybe 1920, I didn't <laughs> um, And we, you know, we need to kill 5G before it causes more harm and things like that. So, lots more stuff to go to. Yes, I forgot to read the best pictures. You know. Uh, so I can show you some more stuff. We can talk about things, ask questions. You can go to that bulb, you can go to the show box, the servers in there. Have fun playing with it. I'll learn how to wire without shutting the power off. Don't, uh, don't go up on this. Or shut the power off. Go to the fuse box, shut the power off. If you can figure out which fuse, when my house is so old, I can't. The main reason I, I don't shut the switch off, besides it being multiple floors away, I go downstairs, I'm going to go I can't figure out what breath controls what. I guess I'm lucky in my condo, every one of them is legal. Yes, it would be not every, it, well, oh, that's the other thing, own a house. Mm -hmm. If you have an apartment, you don't have to scale, you can't, you can't just drill holes through, it kind of might be able to do some of that, but it's really having a house, I think, that gives us the ability, because in much of the world, people are general apartments. You don't get, you don't have the same kind of laboratory. Think of my house, it's even older than Building 20. Now, how many of you appreciate Building 20? I don't understand what the reference is. Okay, Building 20 was the building in which a lot of radar research was done. It was put up very quickly during World War II out of wood. Which meant, I want a hole in the wall, I just drill a hole in the wall. It was built, built out of cellulose, which is like plastic. Make it into what you want to do. By the way, it's the same building that you're on the Pentagon. But that's another story. Thank you, Dr. Drake, for handling it. I thought I was, I was thinking of building, I was actually going to build 26 with it, but not 20. Oh, 20, no, 26, I mean, to be good at building. That's where a lot of computers are, that was a big battle of fancy building. Mm -hmm. And building hex 16 with the computer building, mm -hmm. 30, 32. <laughs> but yeah, but building 20 was the RLA. I did spend a lot of time there, but it, it's a good example of sort of a very soft construction. And having a house where, you know, I can do these things, I can place the wiring for the electrician in if I have to. The electrician's the one who taught me how to, you know, the, the, the real, real um, hackers from each other power off. <laughs> and my father, I remember watching my father doing things without showing the power off, and I was horrified as a kid. Now I have become this. <laughs> so, <clears throat> are all your wireless access points ubiquity products now? You said 150 megabits. Uh, and well, okay. The I still have the, the five quantum and stuff, and I also have my Comcast connection, which is Starry and Google Home, so I try to things out. But basically, the main ones are ubiquitous. Okay, so, so you're getting probably better than 150 megabits. I uh, probably am. Uh, I I need to do some more speed testing of the wireless connection because I did when I'm doing 150 service. Now that I've got the gigabit service, mm. I can see what I, I get. 
I mean, 150 is, you know. Uh, I, the new Fios boxes do run over the Wi-Fi. Even when there's bad service, they work pretty well. It's just once I move the ACP server, the whole thing cracked out. Mm. Uh, is 150 typical? I seem to recall when I first uh, was reading about uh, fiber like 15 or 20 years ago. If I'm, I don't know if I'm remembering wrong, but I, I just wanted it was supposed to be like 500. Like, but, Oh yeah, that, I mean, this, these are arbitrary limits. Now everybody says a gigabit. It's not really gigabit, it's just they said, nobody's really going to use it. We'll, we'll tell them a gigabit and, and then split it among a thousand customers. I mean, I get, uh, oh, I get over 300 on my Comcast. Down, down, down but, it's not no, no. but it's, yeah, it's asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. it's like 20 up or something. Mm -hmm. But I do have the other, I got the Comcast so I can experiment with when I get multiple IP addresses and things from them. I think they might support V6, I'm not sure. Verizon does not. To some extent. So the problem with V6 is I try to get V6 supported in the engine. But it, 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 it was done for the center, which is basically a, a, a dead end. So you're saying, so, so you're buying service that you know is fiber. You've got a quantum box. Well, I've got the ONT that's on the outside of the house coming, so I know it's fiber. So you know it's fiber, yeah. Because Jerry, Jerry's not getting fiber, I don't think. No, but I've got no. my Comcast engine, which is, 400, which is 400 over copper, coming down. Yeah. It's up in this asymmetric, but that's good policy. But on the, on the poles, you're, on poles, you're going to be uh, fiber. But well, down to the house, you're copper. Uh, uh, the, I, the, 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 the fiber on the poles? I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are, especially in Newton. Okay, I'm surprised because I thought they sold the top rock there. But it, it's just material. I mean, I, it, that's why, who cares? And that's a 5G scam. 5G is basically started as a fiber replacement. So you get from fiber and then some marketing people got a hold of it. So we, we can destroy the internet by using this. So please join the campaign. Get the basically stop 5G. You know, like AT&T is now putting 5G on the phones. So yeah, but, but, no, but then you see the five, that's the part of the scam. 5G in the phone is like, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like LTE is not 4G and stuff. It's a market term. Right. The problem so, with me and 5G is not the 5G in the phones, yeah. which is just the highest speed connection. Yeah. It's the backbone, which is a super intelligent network, that where they take 90% of the capacity away from the internet to sell it to the highest bidder and then try to get people to say, because we know, we need 5G for a very simple reason. Just uh, remote virtual reality, because we know that's national priority, along with the war uh, against Mexico. And we know it's proven technology. It's like 3D. Remote 3D is there. You're so cynical, Bob. I'm not cynical. <laughs> I'm just realizing you know, I, I, I just drank the, the AT&T Kool-Aid. I mean, I, I'm, I'm mowing my next column, which is basically going to be, you choose between consumer electronics and 5G, you can't have both. It's the same as all cloud things. These people think everything has to be in the cloud because everything has to be in the cloud because that's the way it works. You know, now you've got to go to back up to the Amazon S3. No, it's just a little, look, I, I don't mind cloud enhancing. Alexa wants to improve speech by using it. They want this to run locally. And I think they're going towards local face recognition for like rain and nest or something. And you only go to cloud and it's unrecognized. I think everything I depend on to be running on a server in my living room. Yes, that's what the Humpicap is nice about. Mm -hmm. So that's why I recommend the Humpicap works like they've done the best job. I use other boxes. Mm -hmm. And it's been a pain connecting things and stuff, especially with Insta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a you know, to, to like, help, help people, help people, 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 people,
wish list would have the center of the earth. There yep. is. Well, um, when I started this in 1998, I researched and found this um, box called Home Vision, which did just what I wanted to do. It, it's basically central control, and um, it, you could build web pages on top of it, but it was just well organized and did what I wanted to do. Yeah, and it just it was programmed around, uh, what's the name of it? What's the name? What's the name? What's the name? Prescott. And he got the press run installed and given the codes and stuff. So you could leverage those and program around it. And that's leveraging Trumpet on all these different boxes. I just, parts are built by own because it's easy to figure out some other, other stuff. But I had to flex the building. So it's home vision, software product for writing because that's home scene. It's a box, it's a hardware box, but there was software. I, I guess it's a trophy on product or, or a hacker product. It was a guy in doing his own. Oh, okay, Florida, so it's like, Florida, Florida like okay, like home stuff. So, the, so it's a small company doing it. So they're still alive. It's obsolete now, but um, so they still alive. It was, it was, uh, it was working until I decided that it was kind of obsolete, and I could just use the IT. Yes. Uh, wireless. So what device do you have? And so I'm doing the lights and um, opening the curtain. And, um, yeah, I, I, I like it. Why do you use to open the curtain? With the well, this is a very ancient curtain that has a loop. At the, I guess it's illegal to make you hang kids if you have the, uh, a loop. You sacrifice a few. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is a cheap, like, $20, $20 device that um, controls that. Oh, I am not sure which one, but like some people sell tiny some I think. You know what I hate is that um, on and off are not separate. Man. Um, in Chicago? Yeah. Oh, one of the things, by the way, that Shelly sells is a motor control. The, the, the Shelly 2 has motor control, so you might want to re rewire it. Uh, I'm happy with that, but there's other shades <coughs> in the house that I would like to... No, if you find out, I looked, the company called SOMFY sells them, they're a little more expensive than $20. Say it again? SOMFY. Yeah, I've been looking at that. No, and, um, I like, I'd be interested in it. And I was thinking, you know, and the things I was looking at, they said 200 bucks for pulling up, up and down the shade. That's ridiculous. <laughs> right, but so it, I, it, I'm very interested in finding out more technology for different aspects. Yeah, me too. I've actually had an uh, app in mind for <coughs> more than 20 years. That, but when, when I first heard about RFID, I was hoping that might be a good way to do it. Which, uh, our idea is that this is the only right thing. Okay. The idea was, I, I think it is the clutter management system. Yeah. Because they take everything I own and slap a label on it. Oh, and no. Have some, I have, have some mechanism where I, it can come exactly like within the three or four inches in, in my house it is. Yeah. Well, that's Bluetooth trackers and stuff. Yeah. Not true. Our, 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 not our idea for that. Like, oh. I probably have like 15 to 20,000 bucks. And oh, it would be particularly expensive to put the Bluetooth trackers in every book. No, I agree. No, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I started the database where I think those for all my books. Because I found the book was good. I would buy it the next time I saw it again. But now I just, uh, uh, I just buy from, uh, from Amazon and it tells me. That's one reason I have to buy from Amazon. Again, I can bring the data down. I mean, there's a whole need for, you know, like the banks. I've been scraping my bank data since 1974. And it's a pain. I mean, I learned a lot about screen scraping programming around, Selene, and all these tools. But, you know, I've got this pile of crap I spent in the in the of my life. So I'm looking for leverage on that and sharing that. So, so there are some shared discussions, but I really want to, you know, get information with the right attitude. Because a lot of this stuff is everybody writing things what they call home page, which is pretty interesting to the Apple home page stuff. Mm -hmm. And I want a more sort of ad hoc. So, the, so I, it, there are various forms, but it'd be good to get this uh, more of a discussion on what's available. So, send me mail about what you find in the shows. Okay. It's going to be a while. <laughs> okay. But that's what I'm saying. Some, I, I like it, it's not a, it, it, yeah, it's a hundred bucks or so it adds to the shade. Yeah. yeah. So.
when I first started, I spent 500 bucks or whatever on this home vision thing, which was wonderful. Oh, I, no, I understand for its time. Look, I looked at a lot of the problem with, with these companies is how do you make money? Because if they're not a trophy home high price, like Revolve gave up. Habitat's interesting because maybe they're small to make money in the hardware for now, and they're open because Revolve didn't want to make it too open, but they want to get the value selling service. That's the unicorn problem. There's a Tim O'Reilly published a good article. You should look at it on the problem with Silicon Valley and the unicorns. Whereas companies that make stuff that get a reasonable return, VCs don't like them. But those are the companies we need to build capabilities. So we need Foxconn economics. Unfortunately, Foxconn bought Belkin and Linksys and a couple of other companies. So they're, they don't want Foxconn economics. So we have to make sure there's a feeding chain of enabling technology. That's why this Bulgarian Shelly thing is interesting. Mm -hmm. But I need to connect with more. But I want these without having this cell phone. I, by the way, 30 bucks I was able to get uh, these Aspen tablets at Microsector. Not in the wall, but I've shifted to a hundred dollar or Chewy, C H U W I, or Chewbacca, no, C H U W I. I try to figure the Chinese translation, but it, it might have been more of a Cantonese. No. Uh, C H U W I? Yes. Yeah, the tablets are about a hundred bucks, but are full Android 8. But so there are all these other technologies which I can build on. If anything is too, too much, I can build the bulbs. Before about the Shelleys, so I went through this whole series, a whole pile of them. So Philips U, I can bridge to. They've got variety. Life says IP. And Shelley's is the future, except they don't have a full variety of bulbs. They just have this bulb. And the whole strips you can do, and it's, you know, we're getting we're we're at a stage where there's all this stuff to play with. The next stage is sort of figuring how to make it available to mortals. With that, and they're going to say, well, they say just go to Alexa and try to explain why. No, yeah, Alexa's nice, but I want to be in control. So, no more questions. I'll try to keep the snow back. Okay, thank you, Bob. Yeah. Cards all warm. Ah. <laughs> uh, you see, that's, no, I need mean, to get reason for me to get uh, Now, that's the sign point for my wife. Yeah. Which? But well, the ask pen is a pen after 30 bucks. Look at ASP. Yeah, can I see it? Let's take it back. Yeah. ASP. Oh, cool. I'll do that. I'm also. How do you put them over there? And the new Shelly P. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I feel interested in the program. Are you familiar with the language called Julia? Oh, you're talking. I looked at, by the way, it's, what did you say about Julia? What? I went to the Julia site. Yeah. So I, I, um, it doesn't compare itself with Python. It doesn't what? Compare itself with Python. Light of this thing that dodges. It compares with Python. Well, Jupiter is like the common interface. I know, and that's what these two were. But it'd be Which is uh, the, 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 the antithesis of and what he's saying 5G you know, is going to do the internet. It, 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 so I've been trying to build hardware well, you can come uh, and talk to that solid models. Model. Model. And so solid is going to do yeah, that. It's going to be the new AT. But do you mean things? And there's not well, a whole yeah, lot of ACM that supports that right now. But I'm going to make an ACM talk about it. Well, it's an IEEE and ACM that also goes out to CSAM or something like that. So, and so <laughs> some of the other stuff is kind of version of this part of these by that old. Yeah, well, I did this one for this. Towards this house. So, so I've already taken that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I can see how it's going to be. But it's good for Ah, uh, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 this is, uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's just, yeah, know, well, it's, uh, if Verizon <coughs> finds a way to break the internet, well, it's like they're sunk. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. this thing, which allows me to use zip code, put plugs and stuff on it.
You can't get those anymore, so it tells you how long it's been. In fact, I was an MIT employee when I worked at a at microwave. I was remember I only worked I only worked half time. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought I remember you being there before. I realized you were there simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. I think it was, was it just after maybe just 2000, after yep. 2001? 2000, yep. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, and so, <laughs> so they're wildly successful for some reason. I mean, all the other white box companies have either consolidated or something, but microwaves seem to. <laughs> they own their own building. Yeah, their overhead is like zero. Yeah, no, that's true. Sorry, I'm just going to hit the mic. Hopefully, there isn't too much. Does your card tell how much snow there is? Well, the Tesla does not give you the camera to see what's like. Um, I went down there recently because there's a sort of cluster contest. You can buy your own know, these, uh, there's these yeah, there's local um, colleges that send teams. The newer to tests that now have uh, international support. Now they don't support them with freebies, but they do have a, uh, uh, a test drive cluster. That they want to report to. So they they generally get Nvidia geared before most. So, uh, so if you want to get yeah, you want to record a dash cam, you can install a separate dash cam. Yeah, yeah I have one in my car. Mm -hmm. Sh uh, Sh will, uh, Xiaomi has one. That will help you there. Right, right, I, I guess that probably yeah. Yeah. No, it's just right. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I'm going to say that. I'll find out. I'll talk to Jerry about it. Because I see they've got the schedule for the next couple of months. I'll see if I can get in. I got some of this gear ready to go. I demoed it at the IT festival. That that, that I, mean, I was so looking at three of the $30 so camera. Maybe I'll spend some time in the sun on my IoT stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they, they they well, let me, you know, and uh, how, how, how big of a payment is that? That's such a hard way to get it. You said you're in a normal way. Yeah, well, the shower, I got the new one. I lost it. Sorry, I'm at 1325. Uh, uh, which, you know, oh, okay. Got a okay. So you came straight there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, we, the pro and I think it was like the whole set of cards. 540 from the office, and I think we're still in the other time. Right. And then we put it in the boiler, so I came out of the location of my car. I'm working on doing more work at home. It's easy to just to be in the office on days that I know I'm coming here, you know? Yeah. Well, let me talk to you know, Jerry and Mary and set their schedule. And so if I cleared with them, uh, probably the next couple of months. These two guys? These two guys, yeah, they put the schedule together. So they have to do this this um, this lecture before the end of the academic year because there's no way you get the students to come to um, anything in like June. It's like, it's gone. So, so I, March, April, May, yeah. So I basically got three bytes at like this, but, uh, but seeing that they don't have any sort of lectures yet. Hybrid um, Lexus. She loves it. Next month, what would March? She, she had a better Lexus. Jabber, what do you have lined but up for speakers? For What's that? She's got speakers speaker. lined up next couple months. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, All right. I think nothing said right now. In light of this, I may have an idea. It's, it's actually going to have a lot more Linux in it than his presentation, but let me think about this. What's true? My father had a Jag. For his company car. Hey, nothing at all scheduled to feature at all. Got no March, no April. It's all unconfirmed to be determined with no topic. You've got not, you, you put the install fest in though, but yeah. Or haven't you? Oh, not yet. Yeah. I just sent an email to see what things are. Uh, 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 people right? Yeah. And then I had uh, Boston on the Oh, yeah. So all my time is there. I haven't been to look back at the emails yet. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right, well, let me. But um, no, we definitely want to talk about the summer for MIT. Where you are. Yeah, the other three are going to be the other. Uh, uh, the more slide yeah, we need to know what dates are good for. Um, uh, what's the name of the uh, uh, full deck? Uh, oh, the guys that were. Yeah, the, <laughs> Dave. Well, Dave, yeah, Dave said 
Dave responded to your email too. Oh yeah, Dave Kramer. Yeah. Um, the, what, 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 what's the name of the couple that runs the? Uh, it's it's the they run the summer barbecue, right? Frank. Oh, John, uh, John and Shelly Chambers. No, no, no. The, uh, the guy that does the folk doc stuff. Uh, At the oh, moment, Dick Miller. Like, oh, Miller. Oh, oh, Miller. Oh, yeah, I had no idea why I was having that brain fire. <laughs> so I just couldn't pull his name for it. <laughs> yeah, we'll be having the uh, the other two at, uh, over at this place. Yeah, yeah. We'll right. see so you this in the next few so what what does the install fest mm -hmm. entail nowadays? You know, since well, it's well, kind of easy to install Linux, like, so what, no, what are you offering? <laughs> uh, like, like, so mostly people walking in with legacy hardware these days. Yeah. You see some pretty crazy old laptops at install fest. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I could arrange a tour of my house and we'll have a meeting there. Yeah, well, I, I, um, I'm going to scrounge up some more MIT students and we'll, we'll take a tour of your house. It's getting scary. <laughs> <laughs> so long, Bob. Yeah, we, we do need to think about it's, additional uh, things Bob. we can offer at the install. Bob. That was, uh, that's mine. Yeah. That's oh. my audio recorder. Yeah. Yeah. You can turn it off now, actually. Okay. Well, we got it. The back up audio because the audio fails. Uh, Flash drive? Yeah, send me a pointer to the video. Okay. okay. I don't want the sound work at all because I'd love to go to the mic. Oh, uh, 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 he's oh, pretty good. Cut you on the camera. Actually, you can turn it off. Oh, yeah, another camera there. That's like a good camera. Yeah, so, th these days you can just mail me the pointer and it's easy to copy the whole thing. Now, IP, my home network. It's, it, it, when you've got to turn some of the devices, you've got a challenge, especially one of the real problems with today's IP is you don't have global naming. I do use MDNS and something. They found something, but for some reason, HP printing can take five hours to be detected by MDNS. So MDNS works, but it's got some stuff. By the way, I should say, all my switches in my house are TP, almost all are TP link switches, which use an easy smart so I can actually look at the switch, detect it. But they haven't bothered to fully program it. They're a bit low-end, they're a little flaky, but I don't know where they're blocking some of the signals they might add to that. I tend to go the opposite way with that. What I'll do is that I'll, I'll, uh, look up, I'll find out what the MAC address is for the device, such as have the VCP server assign a static ID no, to that. Well, I, that, no, I could do that. I'm trying to avoid static ID address as much as I can. So I, I did program MAC, look up the MAC to get the IP dynamically, mm -hmm. It turns out that software at the time was unliable and everything, but we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, by the way, one nice thing you figure it is VLAN, and I guess the network is a VLAN, which means I could have the access points also get available on the access points. VLAN is not a security, whereas anybody who looks at the wires, but I can choose to expose them dif differently. And I'm thinking commercial stuff I'm doing, where you can say this, this port on this device has this VLAN. So the user only sees, cannot get to the more VLAN. Now, if somebody acts in a physical wiring box, all bets are off, but they don't encrypt to get to the reserve. I don't always encrypt them. Yeah. So uh, I'll get more to ubiquity, but it's got problems to fall over. I, I had it running uh, um, to automatically fall over Comcast when Verizon went away. Uh, and some weird stuff happening, like a PHC, I want to go through. So I exercised it. And exorcism is a very important thing in computing. So I don't have it set to automatically fall over, but files have been reliable enough, a few outages, nothing. What you do discover is which programs are fatal dependent on the file. Dying DNS isn't supported well, but now they've stopped using PPTP and went to PHCP, uh, the IP address doesn't change that much. And a few times I can manually fix it. And there's no APR. But I said, uh, at that point, I was exploring the puppeteer. How do you know about puppeteer and selenium? Okay. Selenium is a, t is a t I've been using a lot to script web test engine. Puppeteer is Google's headless phone. So I've been using that. So since I wrote that, I figured out how to use puppeteer to get the data from Ubiquiti. Very simple uh, notebook. And because of the libraries and stuff, that's this is the whole node ecology at NPM, which is very powerful. And there is a war going on between Python and JavaScript. JavaScript's going to win. Uh, I'm going to 
we're going to amend the complaint to go to the ECMA PC53 meeting, which is JavaScript for devices. The reason I say JavaScript is going to win is the NPM is, is a powerful ecology. The language has been involved in async paradigm and stuff. Uh, the hinting you get from, from TypeScript is very powerful. Uh, Python has a community, but it's not quite the same power in terms of the the language. What API, uh, what IDE do you use for JavaScript? Visual Studio Code. <coughs> uh, I, it was using Visual Studio, and then discovered all the cool kids using Visual Studio Code is quite powerful. It works very well, includes debugging. I, use Chrome, I can debug in Chrome. It's integrated with Chrome, they're sort of giving up on Edge. Mine's have given up on their own Edge, but they didn't use Chrome Edge. The Chrome engine. And it runs on other platforms. I, I need to figure out how to. I'm currently running my server, for example, on DigitalOcean. But I haven't quite got a Visual Studio there, but I've got to figure out how to get X Windows to work and install. But you know, there are only so many projects. But the nice thing, yeah. So now there are some people who like to throw other things, but I think Visual Studio is still the winner. And it's interesting, Visual Studio was written by the guy who did uh, Eclipse. So he learned a lot. Eclipse was a pain. So Visual Studio Code works well. How many of you use it? Okay. Okay. I recommend it. So, um, so this, as I said, is the plug for Shelly. Since I showed this stuff at the beginning, nice thing there is they've got a whole set of things. They've got this and a whole set of things. This is what's up on my wall. You notice that's um, this switch I showed you, the kitchen's a fancy panel which has lights, groups, and things. So you can say, so individual lights are going to group lights. I can choose whether to have group. The way you do groups, okay, my engine had rules. Rules said if this happens, then do this. Sort of like my own ITT, except it's one table for control. And what I realized is that one kind of rule, if this than that, is basically a group. If everything in here, has an effect on this, that's a group. So uh, I actually, so one of the key things I do here is I give it the group list. So if you want to turn on five lights at once, it knows, it, it knows locally what that is, so it goes directly there without having to go through the main server. See, so it works pretty fast. So the kitchen lights can all come on at once, even if they're separate commands, for example. And I can do optimization and grouping and stuff. I won't go into it. But the trick was to get it to work across disparate devices. So if that's a Z-Wave, this is Zigbee, this is Incyon, it's all smoothed out. You, can't, you won't know from it, though. And it's a little color marking in some case so you know it. But for the most part, I can create a group out of any combination, and it works smoothly. Um, and this is the nest at which I, I there's an API. Basically, they seem to have gone off the radar. May 2018, they stopped updating the Nest blog. So at some point, I'd like to do cameras and stuff that are not Nest-based. Somebody might do that for me. But the thing is, the physical form factor of the cameras, I can't do that. So they've got robust physical devices, really the physical part that's important to me. And that's your Instagram. Now this here is a flick, which is a Bluetooth. Oh, I should have brought it with me. I forgot to bring my Esprino. So Flick has a built-in Bluetooth thing, which is good, which runs on an app on here. And for a while it works, and then it stops working. So I gave up on this. But the Esprino is a little Bluetooth thing programmable with JavaScript. A little button with a battery in it that I plan to make more use of. Uh, very easy to program. Uh, did I have room to bring it? I probably forgot. I mean, I will take advantage. At some point, I want to support the beacons. And, oh, this is cute. This is a low left bulb. But I started <coughs> using the, the U bulbs. Little, all these, you see, I'm fascinated by all these little shims and stuff. And I get a whole other talk on TV over the top. But the important part is, and this is sort of, sort of like, is normalizing all the common IP connectivity. Despite all the problems with the internet, I can solve the protocol problems and all these separately. With enough shims, I can pull things together. So, uh, and for those curious about ubiquity, this is the ubiquity screen for the devices. And, and what I said, uh, explain, I can now use probably a full table of all the devices. 
So if I want to go, it'll show me the MAC addresses and the IP addresses, and I can update that. It takes just a few seconds to pull off the table. So I can I can use I have a map of my network and use to do that map and plan to make more use of that rather than static addresses. So that that I think yeah helps a lot. So uh, lots of lessons why we need to networking, you know, all the rules. The interesting philosophical question. What's the scene? Does the light bulb know it's part of the scene? Traditionally they would have group IDs in the bulbs. My scenes are external, so you don't know which point of the scene. Uh, looking forward to the future, I do want to get rid of the, the physical topology so that if, we have a sh if I share devices between, let's say, uh, Pleasant Town keeps using driveway, like the share. I want that to be a logical sharing, what group it's in, not tied to the physical topology. Uh, and when you say I want to read, Alexa should know, okay, turn this light on, adjust the shade here and everything. Uh, so there's all sorts of interesting future possibilities to do that I think Alexa is not good for ambig amb ambiguous stuff. But it's part of it. But I want to be able to have commitment. So I want to be able to, you know, by the way, one thing I discovered with Alexa is you wake people up. Say for okay, Google, I say, okay, Google, set the alarm. And it, I, it tells me, it's setting the alarm, waking. My wife doesn't necessarily appreciate that. <laughs> And there are all sorts of other things to work with the HVAC, there's a TV, you know, all this other kind of stuff. And me more APIs on things. And that's a trend, I think. As we prove the value, this goes back to that thing. You know, HVAC, APIs, I want to rethink HVAC. Because once you have smart devices, each damper can be smart and everything. And the HVAC people basically stuck in that 1910. Maybe 1920. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we, you know, we need to kill 5G before it causes more harm and things like that. So, lots more stuff to go through. The best, I forgot to read the best pictures. You know, uh, so I can show you some more stuff. We can talk about things, ask questions. You go to that bulb, you go to the show box, the servers in there. Have fun playing with it. I'll learn how to wire without shutting the power off. Don't uh, don't go off me on this. Always shut the power off. Go to the fuse box. Shut the power off. If you can figure out which fuse, but my house is so old, I can't. The main reason I, I don't shut the switch off, besides it being multiple floors away, I go downstairs. I can't figure out what breath controls what. I'm lucky. In my condo, every one of them is labeled. Yes, it'll be not every. It, well, oh, that's the other thing. Own a house. Mm -hmm. If you have an apartment, you don't have to scale. You can't, you can't just drill holes through. It kind of might go through some of that, but it's really having a house, I think, that gives us the ability. Because in much of the world, people are dealing with apartments. You don't, get, you don't have the same kind of laboratory. Particularly my house, it's even older than Building 20. Now, how many of you appreciate Building 20? I don't understand what the reference is. Okay, Building 20 was the building in which a lot of radar research was done. It was put up very quickly during World War II out of wood. Which meant, I want a hole in the wall, I just drill a hole in the wall. It was built out of cellulose, which is like plastic. Make it into what you want to do. By the way, it's the same building that you were making on. But that's another story. Thank you, Dr. Trek, for handling it. But I thought I was, I was thinking of building, I was actually thinking of building 26 with it, not 20. Oh, 20, no, 26, I mean, can be good at building. That's where a lot of computer stuff, that was a big battle fancy building. Mm -hmm. And building hex 16 with the computer building, mm -hmm. 30, 32. <laughs> but yeah, but building 20 was the RLA. I did spend a lot of time there, but it, it's a good example of sort of a very soft construction. And having a house where, you know, I can do these things, I can place the wiring for the electrician in if I have to. The electrician's the one who taught me how to, you know, the, the, the real, real um, hackers don't shut the power off. <laughs> and my father, I remember watching my father doing things without shutting the power off. That's horrifying as a kid. Now I have become this. <laughs> so, are all your 
wireless access points ubiquity products now? You said 150 megabits. Was well, uh, well, okay. The I still have the, the Fi's Quantum something, and I also have my Comcast connection, which is Starry and Google Hope, so I've tried to things out. But basically, the main ones are ubiquity. Okay, yeah. so, so you're getting probably better than 150 megabits. I probably am. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to do some more speed testing of the wireless connection because I did when I'm going to the service. Now that I've got the gigabit service, mm. I can see what I get. But what you mean, 150 is, you know. Uh, I, the new Fios boxes do run over the Wi Fi. Each one says bad service, but it runs pretty well. It's just once I move the ASP server, the whole thing cracked out. Mm. Uh, is 150 typical? I seem to call when I first. Uh, I was reading about uh, Fiverr like 15 or 20 years ago. If I'm, I don't know if I'm remembering wrong, but I, I just wanted it was supposed to be like 500 like this. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, this, these are arbitrary limits. Now everybody says a gigabit. It's not really gigabit. It's just they said nobody's really going to use it. We'll, we'll tell them a gigabit and, and then split it among a thousand customers. I mean, I got, uh, I'll let you I got over 300 on my Comcast. Down, but, but it's yeah, it's asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. It's like twenty up or something. No, yeah. But I do have the other. I got the Comcast, so I can experiment with. But I get multiple IP addresses and things from them. I think they might support V6. I'm not sure. Verizon is not. To some extent. Yeah. So the problem with V6 is I try to get V6 supported V6, but. It, it, it's been, it was done for the center, which is basically a, a, a dead end. So you're saying, so so you're buying service that you know is fiber. You've got a quantum box. Well, uh, I've got the ONT that's on the outside of the house coming, so I know it's fiber. So you know it's fiber, yeah. Because Jerry, Jerry's not getting fiber, I don't think. No, but I've got no. my Comcast connection, which is 400 over copper coming down. Yeah. It's up in this asymmetric, but that's their policy. But on the on the poles, you're uh, on the poles. You're going to be uh, fiber, but well, down to the house, you're copper. Uh, uh, the uh, the, 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 the fiber on poles. The Comcast. I'm pretty. I'm, I'm pretty sure they are, especially in Okay, I'm surprised because I thought they sold the copper. Up there. But I mean, it's just material. I mean, I, it, that's why. Who cares? And that's a 5G scam. 5G is basically started as a fiber replacement. Again, from fiber, and then some marketing people got a hold of it and said, We can destroy the internet by using this. So, please join the campaign to get the new basically stop 5G. And why ATT is now putting 5G in the phones. So yeah, but, but, no, but then you see, the five, that's the part of the scam. 5G in the phone is like. Mm -hmm. It's like LTE is not 4G and stuff. It's a marketing term. Right. The problem it, so with me on 5G is not the 5G in the phones, yep. which is just the highest speed connection. Mm -hmm. It's the backbone, which is a super intelligent network yep. that where they take 90% of the capacity away from the internet to sell it to the highest bidder and then try to get people to say, because we know we need 5G for a very simple reason. Just uh, remote virtual reality. Because we know that's national priority, along with the war uh, against Mexico. And we know it's proven technology. It's like 3D. Remote 3D is there, and we have to do it. You're so cynical, Bob. I'm not cynical. <laughs> you know, I'm just realizing, you know, I, I, I'm just drank the, uh, the AT&T Kool-Aid. I mean, I, I'm, I'm mulling my next column, which is basically going to be, you choose between consumer electronics and 5G, you can't have both. It's the same as all cloud things, you know. These people think everything has to be in the cloud because everything has to be in the cloud because that's the way it works. You know, now you've got the boards uh, backing up to the Amazon S3. No, it's useful. And look, I, I don't mind cloud enhancing. Alexa wants to improve speech by using the they want this to run locally. And I think they're going towards local face recognition for like green and mess or something. And you only go to cloud and it's unrecognized and things like that. And I hear you depend on you running on a server in my living room. Yes, that's what the Hubbicam is nice about. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm recommending Hubbicam looks like they've done the best job. I use other boxes. Mm -hmm. 
and it's been a pain connecting things and stuff, especially with Instagram. But also, I mean, if you want depth of light, like look at Maryland. They've got a nice protocol. I look at programs with my can, it's just easier, you know, to, to let up the habitat people, habitat users, and capabilities. So, how many of you are doing this kind of stuff with your hands? Oh, well, I wish this would have the same idea. There yep. is. You do stuff with? Well, um, when I started this in 1998, I researched and found this um, box called Home Vision, which did just what I wanted to do. It, it's made with central control, and um, it, you could build web pages on top of it, but it was just well organized and did what I wanted to do. Yeah, and, and Jeff Beer is programmed around, uh, what's the name of it? What's the city? What's the name? Prescott. And he got the Prescott installed and given the codes and stuff. So you could leverage those and program around it. And that's what we interpret on the, all these different boxes. I just, parts are built by own because it's easy to figure out some other, other stuff. But I have to flex with those. So it's home vision, software product for writers, but that's home series. It's a box, it's a hardware box, but there was software. I, I guess it's a trophy home product or, or a hacker product, some of the It was a guy in, doing his own. Oh, okay, so it's like, like okay, like home stuff. So, the, so it's a small company doing it. So they're still alive. It's obsolete now, but um, but are they still alive? It was it was uh, it was working until I decided that it was kind of obsolete. And I could just use the IT. Yes. Uh, wireless. So what device do you use? And so I'm doing the lights and um, opening the curtain and. Um, yeah, I, I like it. Why do you use the open curtain? Well, this is a very ancient curtain that has a loop. At the, I guess it's illegal to make you hang kids if you have the, uh, a loop. <laughs> you sacrifice a few. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is a cheap, like, twenty or twenty dollar device that um, controls that. Oh, I'm not sure which one, but like some people sell hundreds, some I think. You know what I hate is that um, on and off are not separate. Man. Um, in Chicago? Yeah. Oh, one of the things, by the way, that Shelly's sells is a motor control. The Shelly 2 has motor control, so you might want to re rewire it. Uh, I'm happy with that, but there's other shades <coughs> in the house that I would like to... No, if you find out, I looked, the company called SOMFY sells them, they're a little more expensive than $20. Say it again? SOMFY. Yeah, I've been looking at that. No, and, um, I like, I'd be interested in it. And I was thinking, you know, and the things I was looking at, they said too much cost for pulling up, up and down the shade. That's ridiculous. <laughs> right, but so it, I, I, I'm very interested in, in finding out more technology for different aspects. Yeah, me too. I've actually had an uh, app in mind for <coughs> more than 20 years. But, but when, when I first heard about RFID, I was hoping that might be a good way to do it. But, uh, our idea is that this is the only right thing. Well, that is, I, I think it is the hunter management system. Yeah. Because I take everything I own and slap a label on it. Oh, no. I have, have, have some mechanism where I, it can tell me exactly, like, within the three or four inches in, in my house it is. Yeah. Well, that's Bluetooth trackers and stuff, yeah. though, not too bad. Our idea for that. Like, for oh. I probably have, like, 15 to 20,000 bucks. And no, it would be you know, particularly expensive to put the Bluetooth trackers in every book. No, I agree. No, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I started a database where I think those for all my books. Because I found the book was good. I would buy it the next time I saw it again. But now I just uh, I just buy from, uh, from Amazon and it tells me. That's one reason I have to buy from Amazon. Again, I can bring the data down. I mean, there's a whole need for, you know, like the banks. I've been scraping my bank data since 1974. And it's a pain. I mean, I've learned a lot about screen scraping programming around Selene and all these tools. But, you know, I've got this pile of crap that's right there that this is my life. So I'm looking for leverage on that and share it. That's what, so there are some shared discussions, but I really want to, you know, get information with the right attitude. Because a lot of this stuff is everybody writing things that they call homepage, which is pretty interesting to the Apple homepage stuff. Mm -hmm. And I want a more sort of ad hoc. 
So, the, so I, if there are various forms, but it'd be good to get this uh, more of a discussion on what's available. So send an email about what you find in the show notes. Okay. Give me a while. <laughs> okay. But that's what I'm saying. It's, like it, it's not a it, it, yeah. It's a hundred bucks or so it adds to the shade. Yeah. yeah. So when I first started, I spent five hundred bucks or whatever on this home vision thing, which was wonderful. Oh, I, no, I understand for its time. Look, I looked at a lot of them. The problem with, with these companies is how do you make money? Because if they're not a trophy home high price, like Revolve gave up. Habitat's interesting because maybe they're small to make money in the hardware for now. And they're open because Revolve didn't want to make it too open, but they wanted to get the value of selling service. That's the unicorn problem. This is a Tim O'Reilly published a good article. You should look at it on the problem of Silicon Valley and the unicorns. Whereas companies that make stuff that get a reasonable return, VCs don't like them. But those are the companies we need to build the capabilities. So we need Foxconn economics. Unfortunately, Foxconn bought Belkin and Linksys and a couple of other companies. So they they don't want talk to kind of economics. So we have to make sure there's a feeding chain of enabling technology. That's why this Bulgarian Shelley thing is interesting. But I need to connect with more. But I want these without having to be a cell phone. I, by the way, at 30 bucks I was able to get uh, these Aspen tablets at Microsector. Not in more, but I've shifted to a hundred dollar Chewy C H U W I. Or Chewbacca, no, C H U W I. I try to get the Chinese translation, but it, it might have been more of a Cantonese. C H U W I. Let's see, Cerebook tablet? I yes. Can. Yeah, the tablets are about 100 bucks, but are full Android 8 and something, and 1920. So there are all these other technologies which I can build on. If anything, it's too, getting to be too much, like in terms of bulbs. Before I went to Shelley, so I went through this whole series, got a whole pile of people down. So Philips U, I can bridge to. They've got variety. I like it because I can. And Shelley is a feature, except they don't have a full variety of bulbs. They just have this bulb. Okay. And the whole strips you can do. And it's got, you know, we're getting. We're, we're at a stage where there's all the stuff to play with. The next stage is sort of figuring out how to make it available to mortals. Got, uh, and they're going to say, well, they say, just go to Alexa and try to explain why. No, yeah, Alexa's nice, but I want to be able to draw. So, no more questions. I'll try to keep the snow back. Okay, thank you, Bob. Thank you.